All right, hopefully this thing is working. How you guys doing today? Welcome to another Monday live stream. Shane Nelson here with you. I feel like a DJ sometimes when I'm doing this. <laughs> All right, today I was figuring I could do a Halloween sculpt and I'm just gonna kind of wing it. Thought I'd wing it. So if you guys can hear me okay, please let me know. Mm -hmm. Is it working? Hey, what's up, Mark? Can you see me okay? I guess you can. <laughs> I should say see and hear me okay. Sounds good. Hey, comics, how's it going? All right, awesome. My throat's a little, my, my, I've lost my voice a little bit, um, but that's okay. We'll just do what we can do. I'm going to do a zebra, zebra gray today. So I thought I would just ha have some fun and sculpt a skull. That would be kind of fun to just kind of wing it. No, not using any sort of, uh, not using any sort of concept or anything like that. Just kind of pulling it out of my head. Hey, what's up, Kim? Okay, sweet. All right, and I know there's a weird sound gate on here on this thing, so um, yeah, a noise gate. Okay, so um, skull. Here we go. Skull, skull. I'm just going to start rocking it. Hey, what's up, David? <laughs> no, I wish I'm, I'm, yeah, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of a personal deal. So I'm just glad I can still do this from where I'm at. Just going to kind of shape this. And I want to, um, I'm going to be using, just shaping as I go. Hey, Mark. Yep, everything's great. Thank you for asking. Yes, and I have lost a lot of weight. That's part of what I'm doing. I'm, I'm on kind of this the, a healing thing. So, um, and part of that's losing some, losing some weight and taking care of myself. So. How are all of you doing? <laughs> okay. I want to make kind of a, just a regular skull and then tweak it from there. And I think I'm just going to go straight on with Sculptress. Just go crazy with it. Yeah, no worries, Ryan. Thanks for asking. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Yeah, I've lost quite a bit. <laughs> and it's I feel great, honestly. I feel like I'm I feel like I'm in my twenties again, so I, I yeah. It's good stuff. Hey, what's up, Mike? How you doing? Been a while. Okay, um, let's see. Let's go to I'm going to actually make this bigger because I know I'm going to want to make it bigger. Because I want to subdivide it and then do some Sculptures Pro. Let's see here. Should switch over to a Sculptures Pro brush. That would help. Let's turn it on. Turn this off, and we're good to go. Okay, so let's find a good resolution. I think we're. Hey, that's actually not bad. All right, let's go with that. Okay, so what I'm doing here with Sculptus Pro is I'm essentially 
wanting to give myself just endless geometry that I can just play with. Now, I used to use DynaMesh for this, but now I like using Sculptus Pro because it's dynamically generated, meaning it's going gonna, it's gonna to pull the geometry out while I'm sculpting on it, which is a lot more intuitive, in, in my opinion, um, other than, because with DynaMesh, you have to keep continuing to rebuild your mesh over and over and over again. So, um, yeah, and I apologize, my voice is kind of, it's, I've, I've, I've had some uh, drainage and stuff lately, so my voice is a little whacked. But, um, yeah, so that's what's going on. I'm making a skull for Halloween, just for funsies. Um, yeah, but I'm just gonna use some, uh, so I, cause I usually, you know, I usually like to keep my, my sculpt so clean, I thought I'd get a little, a little messy with this one, but still fun design, you know? And I hope I, I can go with the two hours with the skull, I think so. Because when I'm just, you know, sculpting from my head, it could go much faster than I anticipate. Okay. So anytime I want to increase the geometry, I'm using the I'm using the move brush. Um, but the move brush is not a Sculptress Pro brush. You'll see it's grayed out right here. So when I move, it's not going to create new geometry. So um, if I wanted to create new geometry with a move, I could use Snake Hook or something like that. So yes, Mister <laughs> Mister Digital Works, I. Yep, the the jury is out. I'm I'm uh, one of the I'm one of the judges for this year's sculpt off. So I'll give you my address where you can send the checks. <laughs> oh, just kidding, just kidding. I I'm I'm really super duper honored. I love Raph and and uh, <clears throat> oh my gosh, and Joe. I love Raph and Joe. They're 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 phenomenal people fantastic sculptors i can't believe i'm you know even close to their skill level but uh yeah grissetti he's amazing he's on a different level I'll tell you um and i don't get to use clay buildup too much and clay buildup is a sculptor's pro brush so you can you can actually use it and smooth it down, build it up. Turn my smooth intensity down a little bit. So um, so I'm, I'm super excited because I get to judge it, right? Because I've always I've always participated in it. Um, but I'm a little sad because I won't be able to watch it live and watch watch people's sculpts come to life. You know what I mean? But that's okay. It'll be fun. I'll give these eyes some cool shapes, hopefully. Elizabeth, no, that's a E N. I my last name is O N. O N is uh, Swedish, and E N is Dutch. So, as as much as I'd like to be, I doubt it. <laughs> and my good friend Adam and Noah, he makes some really awesome skulls. I've done one before and I'm I'm kind of looking at one of his as as inspiration. But I'm taking it my own kind of my own direction. Yeah, she's a great actress. I loved uh, the Scarlet Witch and good stuff. I like those new Marvel shows they've been putting out. High quality. Continuing the, the storylines. Pretty cool. I'm just using clay 
clay buildup, but I'm cutting it in this time. You know, it's, this is, there's something uh, kind of therapeutic to using clay buildup. Because it feels, feels very uh, freeing and art-like. I don't know how to say art-like. What does that even mean? You know, it kind of feels like, like you're painting or drawing with a brush. Because I'm so used to blocking things out and, and taking my time and doing it so cleanly. Brock, I've watched a few what-ifs. Yep, not all of them. I need to finish. Yeah, Ian, Ian he'll, he might pop in here. Um, Ian is another streamer on uh, the, the Pixelogic Live channel. And he actually did a really cool Captain America from the What If series. And, uh, and then offered it up for 3D print. And a lot of people have, uh, have printed it out. And it looks, it's amazing. I think, I think uh, Uncle Jesse is the YouTube channel. And he um, he printed it out like glow in the dark style, which is was really really cool. Yeah, I'm just kind of being messy because skulls are skulls are messy. What are you looking for when you judge the winner? Uh, well, I think. Mike, I think they'll give me the agenda. So, I mean, I have my own personal agendas that I look for, but I think, I think they'll tell me what. Yeah, Brock, I agree with you there. It's really cool. But I look for all the, all the, all the fairly generic thing like composition design all right i'm gonna make a place for that jaw to go um hey steve <laughs> Um, it is uh, Sculptress Pro. So Sculptress Pro, you just turn it on right here. Activate Sculptress Pro. And what I did is I, I turned off uh, Adaptive right, because by default, ZBrush likes to tie the size of the triangles that you're making to the size of your brush. And I feel that... Um, that's a little too, I want to say dangerous. It's a little too dangerous because um, you, can get, you can get too high of poly count too quickly and it will slow your ZBrush down. And this way, if you turn off adaptive, you just kind of set a number for the entire world, your, your whole, uh, your scene, I guess. So it's, it's basically this size of triangles I'm working with right now. It's pretty light. Um, and I'll, then I can gradually turn up the, uh, the density as I go. Does that make sense? Hey, what's up, Josh? I haven't seen you around for a while. Oh, go away. Oh yeah, medieval. Yeah, totally. I'm gonna. I might. I might duplicate a couple of them, and then I might make a few. Just throw around a couple different designs. Yep. Again, I'm mostly just pushing stuff around with the with the uh, move brush, and then smoothing it. Yeah, it's Sculptus Pro. So yeah, this, this is a way I can show you what it does. Here, let me switch back to uh, Skin Shade 4 so you can see this a little bit better. Um, but essentially, there are, a few, there are some brushes that work with Sculptus Pro and some that don't. 
and um, uh, snake hook brush does so if I hover over the surface here and I pull it out you can see how it's being dynamically generated right like that it's kind of a cool design <laughs> um, and you can like what? and then you have this accu curve thing you can accu curve just makes it more pointy so what is it what is what is what it i'm making a skull okay uh let's go back i don't want accu curve on and i'm just using, using the move brush Yeah, Mickey Mouse skull, that'd be fun. Let's see, I'm gonna push this in. I kinda give the gotta give the jaw a place to live here. A little flatter. I like really crazy shaped cheeks and stuff. All right, and for these teeth, I'm actually going to give them sockets and then build teeth separately. So you got your front teeth, teeth might crank up the uh, density so I have it out here on my interface and you can download this interface from 3dcharacterworkshop.com this is my my own custom user interface again I said that really fast 3dcharacterworkshop.com scroll down about halfway down the page and you can find it and I give away these brushes and my ruler file all for free check that out anyway you can see this uh this number here it's set to default um i did scale my skull up so the default size was a, a better size to start with hey what's up ryan so um now i can just turn this down a little bit and i'll get more dense triangles see that and now i can it's kind of like uh, focusing a camera in my opinion it's it feels like that so you want to start out really big and loose and then you can kind of uh, wash in the the details only where you're going to be adding more details like so again move move does not affect the triangle count because it's not a sculptor's pro brush pull this back I want to make it kind of this cool stylized pulled down so this piece is getting all tucked under here quite a bit let's use i cut this in i just i like to have the surface the uh, poly, the poly showing, so you can see it change with Sculptors Pro. Usually, I, I don't keep the well. Sometimes I'll keep the the wireframe showing, but not not very often. Just painting in some more detail, because then I can now that I have the detail, I can just build this up. So it's very very fun. <laughs> oh default script oh yeah you you clicked on these colors up here to change the colors yeah so this this will change interface layouts and these two will change colors it's probably behind my user interface isn't it like you can't see it but yeah there's some buttons up there hidden underneath my overlay they say yeah they're anyway 
So I, yeah, I go, I'll, I should be, uh, I should be sculpting back from my, my actual studio. Not, not next Monday, but the Monday after that. Tell me your age. How old do you think I am? If you were to guess. <laughs> it's always fun. Yes, I am 50, exactly 50. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Push these. In. I'm gonna. I want to build these up. I like. I like the the kind of deep. Those skulls that have the deep teeth. I feel like I'm in my twenties. <laughs> Yeah, weight, weight is a, like, how much you weigh is a, it's a crazy thing. Because it's one of those things, you don't know what you got till it's gone, and that works with weight, too. I didn't realize how heavy I was until I wasn't. Lighter on my feet, and... Hey, what's up, Jerome? And... I need I, I tried to call you back, but yeah, we need to we need to hook back up. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah, the answer I have the answer is whole food plant based. That's the answer. Some people call it vegan. I don't like the term because it comes with a lot of baggage. I like nutritarian better. I mean, vegan's fine, but it just brings up images of protesters, and yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't I'm not into all that. I just want to get healthy, and I am, and it's working for me, so I recommend it. But the second part of that is. Uh, it's called SOS free, which is sugar, oil, and salt free. That's the biggest culprit. And it's also the hardest to, to break because everything has that stuff in there. Everything. <laughs> Mark, yep. I'm from uncle to grandpa. I am Grandpa Shane. Yeah, that's pretty fun. I'd like to print, print, print these, you know, print a skull out, and it's a nice, fun Halloween decoration. And really, I really want to see if I can push it, you know, like push, push the, uh, the design of it once I get it going. I'll add all sorts of asymmetry and craziness to it. Okay, I need to make this socket actually more of a socket. I really like using this move brush with this because it helps like usually I'm trying to avoid undulations and warbles and things but with a skull it's kind of part of the character of it so you want to add all that. Build some up too. Last Halloween I did a 
all the all the streamers did pumpkins like carved pumpkins that was a lot of fun and i gave my pumpkin kind of uh, skeleton eyes that was fun need to really curve this out excited to be a judge you know i am but i'm nervous because there's going to be some amazing stuff and i don't want to be the guy to i mean i am a, I, I guess i have to pick but you know it's it's like i want to be the guy that just says everybody gets a car you know or whatever like oprah like everybody wins thanks for participating no um but yeah it's going to be a lot of fun i can't wait especially with joe and raf that's going to be awesome I'm just happy that to be able to participate again this year, even though it's off site, you know, not not live. I do miss going there live though. That's like my it's my fam away from my fam. cavities it, it'll really help once i get paint on here too i don't i don't like to push push them super deep yeah let's get them start to get things looking gnar gnarly <laughs> I used to I used to do airbrushing for a living a long time ago, and uh, I this is when I was in high school. You know, in high school you just paint paint and draw skulls on everything, snowboards and cars and motorcycles. It's a skull. <laughs> Leather jackets. <laughs> yeah, so so metal. <laughs> yeah, I decided not to use a concept this time. I mean, I'm I'm looking at uh I'm not going to lie, I'm looking at one of Adam and Noah's awesome skulls just for some inspiration, but I'm I'm kind of going on my own with it. I've painted and sculpted enough skulls in my lifetime that yeah. What, what do they say? If I had a dime for everything, you know. <laughs> hey, Charlie, doing good, thanks. Hey, Tom. Let's make some more sockets and get some teeth going. It's being kind of slow today. Let's see, what do we got here? Half an hour, okay. Sometimes I feel like I'm working too fast and sometimes not so much. I think it's, isn't it uh, Canada's Thanksgiving today and like Columbus Day for us or something? Have I ever... Ever have to have break? It's kind of a random question, but yes. <laughs> I had a, well, I still do. I have a big overbite, and the, the orthodontist thought he could fix my overbite with braces, which you can't really do. But anyway, happy, happy Thanksgiving, whatever they call it, to Canada today. Not going to say much about Columbus Day. 
I have my own thoughts about that. You'll see the inside, but I kind of like detailing the inside sometimes. Make it all designy. I'm using a uh, tablet today. I'm usually using a Cintiq, but today this is a, an Intuos medium. Oh, let's see. Did I miss anything? And I wanna do some pretty deep separations between objects like around here let me crank this up hmm not that okay i'm going to switch back over to my zebro paint maybe we Zero terracotta look like that's kind of cool. Getting to use some of the stuff I don't use too often at all. I don't want to, let's see. So I'm, I'm designing this on the fly, so I'm kind of making decisions how I want to do this too. Because I want to have that. Thanks, Neil. Z brush always, or uh, Neil always on target with the links. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, Zebro makes some fantastic materials. Matte cap materials. No, I don't want to go that direction. I want to go this. Yeah, there we go. That's better. And you can you can al always turn the you don't always have to get tighter with your details. You can get looser as well, and you can just change this up a little bit more. And the reason I would change it is just so it builds up faster and it smooths down faster. I'm essentially wanting to build kind of that a ridge right here that's going back. And then smooth it down in. Because it's cool. It's metal. <laughs> oh, goodness. Let's get push this in a little too much. Very, okay. It's feeling all right. Kind of want to hollow this out a little bit more like a real skull does and we'll start on the making the jaw get those teeth in there hey oscar how's it going get sort of squarish squarish
Oh yeah, yep. Pablo makes some fantastic stuff. Have you seen his new, ooh, I, I wish I would have grabbed those and I wish I was thinking about it, but it, the new uh, HR Geiger brushes he made are really cool. So if you haven't checked them out yet, I would say check them out soon. That's oh, too heavy. Okay. Yeah, I think you know a lot of people give red wax grief, but as 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 quote unquote horrible as it is, it has its place and it has its use. Um, red wax is unique in that it uh, it has this feature that changes the color as it goes into the into the crevices. So. It's, it's actually really, really good to tell you what your surface is looking like. But it's also red, and it pierces your eyes to their very core. <laughs> uh, do you work with layers when you sculpt rock? Not usually. Um, the only time I really use layers is when I'm doing surface detail at the very, very, very end to try things out. That's, that's when I use them. And the reason why I don't use them very often is, is simply because they're just, they're a little too, uh, they, don't, they don't work very well with a lot of, a lot of other functions. So. Um, sorry, this place I'm in, I'm in a, it's kind of an, an apartment complex-ish type place without getting into too many details and so they might knock on my door they shouldn't but they might okay okay it's fun Yeah, those brushes are great. I'm actually going to turn on perspective. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's true. Ant bar, you can do that. Um, you can change any red wax. So red wax material, it's just a. Uh, if you go into the material editor, it's just a picture. You can see this. You go to modifiers. I'm trying to remember where it's at, but you can see there's. You could put a you if it's a. It's a wax modifier. Let me see. Oh, the matte cap maker. You can actually make matte caps from images. By by the way, so you can pull an image in inside and pick a whole bunch of different areas of that image to make a a matte cap, which is really cool. But I'm, I was expecting to see, usually there's an image down here for the matte cap. Or maybe this isn't a matte cap. Anyway, um, but you can change that image. Or if it, Sometimes there's multiple images, and you can export them, change them in Photoshop, bring them back in, and it'll change it to whatever you want. Because a matte cap is just an image. Okay. Sorry, I'm being kind of slow today. Let's get some teeth going on. Too close. Let's start out here. Hey, friend. Um, we were talking about Pablo's brushes from uh, ZBrush Guides. Pablo's another streamer on here. Um, and he's made some really cool H.R. Geiger brushes. They're really cool. All right. 
So I'm going to turn this down. Okay. And just work on these teeth for a second. Let's switch back over to something you can see. Oh, ZBrush pot with, uh, yeah, 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 thanks so much. Yeah, I did that the, the year before COVID hit. When I was a lot heavier. <laughs> it's funny looking back on, I have kind of my whole, the whole history of my weight loss in, in these live streams and in these, the podcasts and stuff. Shape it like a tooth. You know, a lot of people go, you know, what, what brush do you use? What's your favorite brush? And my favorite brush every time, hands down, is the move brush. Because you're literally just pushing it into shape, what you want. There's no, there is no magic sauce, as they say. Gosh dang it. Stop snapping weird, please. All right, I'm going to go even tighter than this and just do smaller details. The fans on my laptop are screaming at me. That's good. No, uh, no slowdowns. I just wanted to put some cuts through here. Maybe I need to go stronger. Yeah, fun. Ah, those are too even. Let's go one. <laughs> okay, and I gotta shape this better. Shaped like a bone. I know teeth are bones, but shaped like a bone, not a tooth. And you guys, I, if you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend watching uh, The Muppets Haunted House. That was, that was surprisingly good. I enjoyed it quite, quite a bit. I'm a Muppets fan, though. So it doesn't take much. Yeah, it's great. And it's, uh, it has a lot of, you know, Disney's Haunted House stuff in it. And um, Any tips on making money with sculpture or selling STLs or custom? I would like to get to the point of being able to live on this. Um, I would look at like Patreon and kind of do your, do your research and see what kind of stuff you would want to do and uh, maybe do an STL membership that way or a membership on your own or something like that, if you want to do that. Um, there are a lot of people getting into, into doing that. There's a lot of people getting into NFTs. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, I don't think we're ever going to find the perfect Kermit, but, um, you know, I think it was uh, it was good enough for what it was, and I was happy with it. So, <laughs> hey, there's Ian. We were just talking about you, Ian, a little while ago. We were talking about your uh, your your zombie cap that Uncle Jesse printed. Awesome. So Ian's another another streamer on here. He streams on Sunday nights. Dude, I was I I popped in right right at the end of your stream last night. And I was going to say hi, but it's like, it's like you were just barely bailing. But anyway, hi. I'll tell you hi right now. Hi. <laughs> so, yes. Oh, so, CG Trader is a little trickier. And if you're, 
I, I wouldn't recommend sites like uh, like Turbo Squid and you know the places that are just in it just to sell models. You're not going to make a lot of money there because the the market there is just so it's been out too long. The market's saturated, you know. So that's my opinion on that. Um, I would I would I would recommend doing your own uh, Patreon or something that people subscribe to, but those people are hopping on there really quickly too and there's a lot of uh a lot of market flooding happening at the, at the moment so you'd have to stand out and make these a lot bigger all right Kate. Yeah, that's that is a that's a good option. Game resolution. Also, the on Steam you can sell your models on Steam on the Valve Store for like, um, for certain games like Half Life and stuff like that. There's lots of places. Yeah, I don't. I haven't really done a, too much of it, so I don't have a crazy huge opinion on it. So, Rob, the, 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 the Patreon can be sustainable if you find a market. You gotta find a market for it. If you can find people willing to sign up for your membership to get your STLs then you can do it but that's it's becoming more and more rare and there's companies now there that started as like one or two people and they keep hiring people and so it's very difficult to keep up with the amount like just the sheer output of of stls that they can do at a high quality yeah and that's exactly what they do they do so like if if you just do your do a little research on Patreon, you'll see what I'm talking about. There's a lot for miniatures for D and D and stuff um, that that's going on right now. And some of those companies are are making a lot of money off of it, but they're also, you know, they they hire several people and they pump them out like crazy. Like once a month, they have a whole pack of stuff, and to do that as just one person is. Not really feasible. I actually sign up. I'm 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 a member of a few of them because I love 3D printing and I love D and D and I love miniatures and so I'm familiar with the consumer side of it, but I haven't really done too much of the uh, production. Well, usually, yeah, usually they'll start with a Kickstarter too and they'll graduate themselves into making themselves a, a membership Patreon type deal. Yeah, so yeah, it's flooded. You'd have to find a very specific niche, 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 whatever you want to call it. or some kind of a collectibles some, some something that you that people would look forward to and want you know every to pay for every month it's tricky that's why not everyone is doing it but there are a lot of people doing it with some success oh goodness oh yeah my so my buddy hector moran he just uh probably seen his last name i'm butchering his last name moran moran not not moron <laughs> um he's a fantastic sculptor and he got together with some of his buddies and he's he's uh taking a stab at it and the stuff he's doing is really really nice 
but they're killing themselves because they're just, you know, putting out a lot of work to keep up. All right, so let's work. Let's get that. Um, I'm, before I put the back teeth in here, I just want to get the lower jaw in place because I think that's really going to add some personality. Yeah, Turbo Squid will, and so will Sagey Trader. And you can sell stuff on, you can sell printed stuff on Etsy. You can sell printed stuff on, um, oh, what? Just some of those. There's a bunch of other sites like that that you can just, you know, sell your sell your wares on there. But to, to, to put out enough to make enough for a living is difficult. To make some side cash, that's pretty easy. Oh, hold on a second. What happened? I better save this. Save as. know what's going on it started to slow down there for a minute okay stop and there we go okay yeah that's that's the problem nlt for sure that's that's your that's your challenge right yeah you can't you got to stay away from licensed characters if you can because if you start making decent money it'll come after you is this is this chugging? What happened to my hmm. Come on. Sorry, my uh my my tablet decided to stop working, so plug it in. Wake up, tablet. You can do it, buddy. What happened? Maybe we gotta try it with this other cord. Hold on a second. Sorry, guys. Oh, man. So I'm using my iPad as my second monitor and I have my tablet plugged into my straight in. Let's see, does that work? Yes, okay, there we go. All right, touch off. <laughs> okay, buffer clears it up. All right, thanks, good to know. I think, yeah, I think it was uh, struggling there for a second. We're back. We're back, we're back. All right, cool. Okay, so let's make the let's make the lower jaw for oh, I gotta reset this. That's funny, on this sphere, it looks like a, a skull on top of a, like a, could be on a wizard's wand or a staff or something. But I'm going to mesh this or, or push this around into a jaw. So let's go like, This way I can get my, my silhouette happening before I even start figuring the rest out, which is fun. I want to give him a big old chin. 
It has two teeth sticking out. Derp. Rabbit skull. Um, I'm not, I do, I'm just not at home right now. I'm off site right now. So I'm using a tablet. I'm on the road. Be like that. That's what's cool about ZBrush. You can really, um, I'm just using a MacBook Pro. With my with an Intuos. Oh, I need to separate this. There you go. So now it's getting all warbly. All I need to do is, well, I can do one of two things. I can turn Sculptors Pro back on and then lower the density and then just fill it out. Hey, what's up, Sean? I mean, my secret layer. Even less than that. That's too much. Yeah, something like that. There we go. Something more manageable. You can also use Tessimate to flood, to flood fill this stuff too. He's got a beard, the bearded skeleton. Yeah, nudging it this way is pretty fun. Like I said, fun and fun and therapeutic. <laughs> Red beard. Are you just free sculpting? Yep, I'm just free. This is just my own design, inspired by one of my friend Adam and Noah's skeletons, skulls, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, stylized G Leno. Yeah, it looks like a beard. I'll fix it. Yeah, I haven't talked to Matt for a while. I need to need to reach out to that guy and see how he's doing. <laughs> hey, what's up, Ash? How's it going? Yep, I'm I'm trying to trying to make my own design like you do. Be more like Ashley. <laughs> oh, just kind of screwing around, having fun. But I don't under so uh so just just so you know, Daniel, you're on the the Pixelogic live stream channel, so I like to keep the conversation on ZBrush. And you guys, if you didn't, if you didn't know, um, Ashley is a another streamer on here, just like Ian is. I think Ian's still around. Yep. So uh, 
How's it going, Ashley? Ashley streams on Wednesdays. Usually doing some crazy, amazing monster. <laughs> All right, I think I want to pull this way back though. Add some cool. Hey Daryl, how's it how's it going? Um it's not really based on any concept. Um I'm using I'm used to, I mean, Adam and Noah likes to draw some wicked cool skulls. So I'm looking at some of his for inspiration, but it's, it's essentially one of my own. I'm going to push this one in. Let's see what time we got here. All right, it's been an hour. Yeah, like I said, please keep the conversation to uh, ZBrush if you wouldn't mind. But yeah, I'll take questions. And the ZBrush Summit is coming up, you guys. Coming up fast. Yeah, like I was I was saying before, I used to be I used to be into like skate skater designs and snowboarding designs and a lot of those have you know skulls and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> yeah, who's one of the judges for the sculpt off? Maybe me. I don't know I don't know how I pulled that one off but I'm 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 more than honored to be to be one of the judges this year. Can't wait. I'm I'm scared. I'm excited. I'm happy to be judging alongside of uh Joe and Raf. And uh yeah, it's going to be great. But I'm scared because I don't want to you know, I, I know there's going to be a ton of them. There's going to be a ton of entries, and to have to pick is going to be really difficult. Hey, MJ, it's going good. Thanks. All right, here we go. Let's change it over to a gray there, gray skull. What are you going to be looking for in the sculpt off? Uh, awesome sculpts. <laughs> Design, composition, skill, all the things. Um, I love it when a sculpt tells a story. You guys should know that about me by now. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate all the support, you guys. I think I might push this back into this area. Feels a little too, a little too crunched. Um, nope, I can't watch the streams when 
Yeah, I can't. I can't. I can't know who anyone is. I need to be as unbiased as absolutely possible, you know, to be fair. <coughs> oh gosh, I ex I'm sorry. Okay, that's better. Sorry. I coughed my earbud out. Yep, all the things. All right, Sean, thank, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for stopping by. One day we'll, we'll be able to hang out at the ZRush Summit again. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Ash. <laughs> oh, gosh, that was, that was an... Usually I try and hit mute when I do that, but I don't have any such button on this setup. I apologize. I just drank my water weird. <laughs> All right, I gotta put some more, <clears throat> put some more flavor into this. Be something like that. Uh, no, I, I, I'm not allowed to participate other than being a judge. So, you know, honestly, one of these years, I would love to, uh, I would love to MC the sculpt off like, like Drust used to, you know, and Paul Gabri. I don't think I would want to MC the, the actual ZBrush Summit, like, uh, yeah, like Paul can do, but. Hey, what's up, Daniel? I'd be, I'd be way too nervous. It would kill me. Uh, let's see. Yeah, nervous. That's beyond, beyond nervous, right? That would... <laughs> okay. I'm going to do this trick that my buddy Ronnie showed me. Oh, Dress will be there too. Awesome. So, sometimes it works, sometimes not so much. Why not on that one? You have to be on a different brush. I don't know. You're going to participate, right, Ash? Yeah, Drust, Drust wanted to get back into games again. Not the sculpt off. Oh, but you'll be doing the... So I will be doing a, a sculpt off, but not the sculpt off. So I'll be, I'll, I'll be doing a sculpt off with other live streamers just for fun, uh, along with like some other, like Pablo and those guys. Um, and we'll, it's just a really short one hour thing so it's not it's not the so are you, you i think you're doing one of those too yeah ash okay i think that's better i kind of want to drop this down yeah the one hour dealio grenades and weapon attachments Nice. I love the stuff he does. Oh goodness, I forget. On Mondays they come by and do the garbage collections. It's like bam, bam, bam. They're not careful. Yeah, so the story I like to tell when I did the when I did the the, the sculpt off live, that was crazy. Um, that was my first my first ZBrush Summit. I was there with my buddy Matt, and uh, I met a lot of really really cool people that I've became friends with since, and uh, like like 
Martin Van Vander Van Hoven. I always say Vanderhoven, making fun of him. But Martin, yeah. And uh he was he was sitting next to me, but I remember being so nervous that I had some earbuds on like this and my cord was like laying across my chest. And I had music going so I could hear the music, but I could also hear my heartbeat above the music. Like it was like dook 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 it's like a little bird so fast. I was so nervous. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Ian, are you are you in the group with me? Can't remember. I hope I hope we can talk about those. <laughs> Get in trouble. They're nothing. They're nothing too special. Ah, dang it! I think I'm with DC. Uh, myself. Um, I'm trying to remember. I just barely looked at it. Mine, 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 mine. Oh, is Anna? He must be with Anna. Nice. I can't wait to see what comes out of there, but we only have an hour. What can you do in an hour? I guess I blocked out this skull for the most part in an hour, but. Oh, dang it. Okay, I'm going to make. I don't, this, the end of this cheek kind of looks like a clover of some sort. I'm going to change this to more, more knobby. That's better. I know, I know, and I'm, I'm trying to talk him into letting us bring something to the table that's already kind of, kind of partially there, you know what I mean? Like, can we start from not scratch, please? <laughs> uh, otherwise, it's like, you know, it's funny, look, this does kind of look like uh, Matt's icon there, the red beard. <laughs> I just noticed that, that's funny. Yeah, something. Something. Because I have an idea for what I want to sculpt, what I would do with for the, uh, the sculpt off live, I, and I love it. I would, I really want to. I'll probably do it anyway, like after the fact. But it is what it is. So if they let me. Maybe even just pose out a mannequin, you know? So I have something to start with. Because posing a mannequin takes an hour, at least. <laughs> Sing while sculpting. Sing sea shanties or whatever they go. <laughs> yeah, I, I just don't know how much, you know? It's got to make sure we're because it's more about like uh, showing off what ZBrush can do and less about like a competition. You know, it's more talking about uh, what we do here as live sculptors, why we do it, how we do it. How oh, Ashley does amazing monsters and I make crappy cartoons. <laughs> oh, that's too fast. It's too much. Oh, I don't know if I can sit here for two hours, guys. Why did it do that? These chairs in this place are not the most therapeutic of chairs available. And I'm actually sitting on a pillow to raise myself up into the camera, so. <laughs> Oops. There we go. 
Yeah, dude, Ian, Ian, I'm loving your uh your demon slayer. Man, that's coming that's coming along well. I do have to say. I might have to try and like talk you into letting me print it out. Just a just a version for my for my greedy self. <laughs> Alright. I think that's a good base for teeth. <laughs> ah, thanks you guys. I was joking around. Crappy cartoons are us. <laughs> no, it's fun. I, I love doing cartoony stuff. That's my... You know how I decided? A lot of people ask me how I got into what I do. And uh, I was... When I first started out, I was... I, I wanted to get into film, honestly. I wanted to work at Pixar. Pixar was like the holy grail. Still is for me. Um, but... At the same time, I was a I was a big video gamer. I loved I loved playing games and stuff, and um, I just I I knew that of course just starting out I wasn't skilled enough to get a job in the film industry, and I I was from I'm from Utah. There's not really a, a CG film industry there, and so um, next best thing is uh, games. There were some game studios there, and so I got a, my first gig was at a place called Sapphire. And that was, that was a lot of fun because back then it was almost like indie development. Every artist did everything. So I worked on, on Xena Warrior Princess and it's a, it was a, a fighting game for the Nintendo 64. And I did the, the model in, uh, it was called Nendo, this, this modeling program program called Nendo at the time um, and I did the animation in 3D Studio Max um, so the character the textures in Photoshop the uh, rigging in 3D Studio Max the, the animation there exporting it out to I think it was Unreal at the time like an early early version of Unreal maybe it was their own engine I think it was their own engine yeah it was I was trying to remember and, uh, and the arena, and the textures, and the animation sets, basically all of that was, was assigned to the, an artist. So it wasn't like, you know, you make the model, hand it off to the rigging department. And I, I learned so much back then. You can tell that I need to shorten this up, okay. Yes, and I know that dates me, but I don't care. <laughs> that's how long I've been. That's how long I've been around. Oh, whoops. And then um, they, I became an animator because I, I liked modeling much better. But I became an anim animator out of necessity, and I, I needed it for job security. Um, not very many people wanted to be to do animation back then um, in games in film yes but in games not so many so I uh, yeah I just kind of dug in and learned it and I did I, I was an animator for about five years of my career and uh, thanks Ash so um, So, yeah, when I was animating, that, that really gave me an opportunity to, well, we learned mo motion capture. Motion capture was new. And so I learned how to do animate, animation by hand and also motion capture. And that was a lot of fun because later on, I would work on a game called Advent Rising for the Xbox. And we had to do like, I think an hour and 45 minutes of motion capture for that game. And... That was all like a, a, like three of us, and so I was I was the the person in the suit for a lot of the time, even the female act actresses. I was doing the female parts too, and having to like fool and act like you know, and we'd have to come up with all sorts of stuff. So I remember this one this one time we had to uh, act like we were on a ship. And flying and standing on these on these seats on this wing of this ship, 
And so what we did was we put a, a like a big pipe on the ground and we put a big like a, a, a board that we could stand on. And motion capture only captures the dots, right? It, so it doesn't really matter what's in the scene as long as the dots can be seen. And so what we did is we, we, we captured um, somebody kind of just out of the, the way of the dots and he would raise and lower the, the piece of wood so it looked like we were on the wings of this ship. And so we were just like doing our acting and everything on the on the on this board, and uh, it's funny because I lost a lot of weight then too because we were in these hot lights and moving around and acting and stuff like that a lot. So I I did lose some some weight then, but gained it back of course. Um, but I did I did a lot of animation on the cinematics for that game, hand stuff as well, and then I worked at. Uh, Incognito, they're most famous for Twisted Metal, that series. I worked on uh, Warhawk there as an animator. And we, we did a whole bunch of, um, a whole bunch of cinematics that never saw the light of day because they ran out of time and Sony just wanted to ship it. Oh, looks like I messed up these teeth. Oh, well. The thing with Sculpt is Pro. Show you a little trick. If you ever do this accidentally, that uh, can't really do that with uh, Dynamesh. Oh really? <laughs> you played them? That's 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 awesome. So let's see. Um, yeah. So Warhawk, and I I, I also did rigging too, and I rigged. A lot of the the vehicles in Warhawk, so like the tracks, the half tracks, the tanks, the Warhawk itself, um, I helped with making all the wings and the landing gear work and all that stuff. It's quite a quite a chore, quite a challenge, but it was fun. And then, but the whole time, this is getting back to my story of why I became a stylized character modeler is because in my spare time, like when I wasn't animating, when I wasn't doing whatever, you know, hanging out with the family or whatever, I was sculpting characters on my own for myself. I loved it. And so, you know, I decided, I decided, you know, maybe there's something to this. Maybe I need to focus on this more and get better at it because that's the thing I want to do the most. And so I did. That's what I focused on and I, I got better at it. And then while I was at Incognito, actually um, between Sapphire and Sony, or sorry, Sapphire and Glyphics, I worked at Acclaim on HBO Boxing. And for that game, I was actually a modeler. I was, but I was a realistic modeler. I was, I was modeling uh, boxers. And I was responsible for like the whole lineup of boxers. Me and a good friend of mine, Dustin Hansen, he was, we, we were both working on those and they were a lot of fun. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. So I'm getting used to these controls. There we go. I want that one. <clears throat> so when I was at Sony, there was this company called it was a it was a break off from Avalanche. Avalanche is where I ended up, which ended up ended up being purchased by Disney. Um, but Avalanche at the time they were they were making Tack and the Power of Juju if you guys remember that game or it was a nickel um, for Nickelodeon it was Nickelodeon released they were doing a whole bunch of Nickelodeon shows back then or uh, games sorry from their shows like Rugrats and things like that well they ended up doing a Tack and the Power of Juju which was a 
it came out of the head of my friend uh, T Todd Harris at Avalanche. And at the time, they, they decided to make a different studio called Fall Line, which would only do Nintendo games. This is when the Wii was just barely getting popular. And uh, it, was, it was before the Wii was out, so they had a, a, a dev station. And we were playing with it, and we could see that it was the next big thing, you know, before it was the next big thing. And we got to do some, some games for it, and I worked on one called Rock Band for... Um, that was for Disney, but it started out on at, at Fall Line. And uh, I started out as a rigger on, at Fall Line rigging some characters for a Narnia game for the Game Boy. The 3DS, actually, not the Game Boy. Uh, Prince Caspian. Crazy. Um, let's see. I'm trying to remember what these stupid teeth look like. I'm going to leave a gap, I think, right there. And just give them some molars. What the heck are they doing out there? Let's see. Sweet tooth. <laughs> it's funny too, because it was like so not not for kids, you know? It was like pretty adult oriented. Hey, what's up, Mike? Um, I like cartoony stuff. Would you say that one has to go through a realistic stage necessarily? No, but you do have to know enough about anatomy that you know how to break it. That's, that's part of it. So it's, um, it's, and this drives me crazy and I really, I, I become quite agitated when people say this, that, uh, stylized is just like a, it's it's an easy way to do characters you know it's not as hard as realistic characters it makes me really because that's 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 just a preconception thinking stylized is easy and it's not even close i would sometimes say it's more difficult because you're not, because with with realism you're just basically looking at the concept or whatever and, 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 look, and getting reference and putting it all together. And um, more time is spent in the texture work and the surface work and less time in um, the design, the actual design. Like with, with um, you know, with... With stylized stuff, there's a, a whole bunch of design that goes into it. You know, it's almost like graphic design. It's like you're, you're not only sculpting a character, but you're also a graphic designer in a way. Oops. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a way to say it. Honestly, Ashley, yeah, they haven't developed an eye for art yet. That's, that's, that's just an assumption. I get, I get students in my workshop that they just assumed that it's much easier to, you know, do stylized. So I think, I think the way in, especially to learn ZBrush, the way in to learn stylized is easier because it's, you know, you're starting with like primitive objects and blocking them out and that it, it just sits in your head easier than realistic characters. There's not, it's not so complex to start with. But the characters in the end are just as complex, if not more. That's my opinion on it anyway. Gosh, I keep doing that. Stop it. I would say if you want to impress the parents or uncles and aunts, show them your most intricate, detailed piece of work. The untrained eye sees 
more marks is more impressive yep yep and that's why you know some it, at certain times in my career i have often thought about you know maybe i should just do some some hyper realistic thing just to say i can do it you know what i mean like i as much as i don't want to because that doesn't interest me at all i just i, I look at those things and it's it's okay i would but I, I just wonder why sometimes, like why I don't know that I would do that. Like just, it already exists, just take a picture or whatever. But I, you know, there is, there is an absolute art to getting something to look as absolutely realistic as possible. And, you know, that's a whole different skill set. They share, they share skill sets, but it's a, it's a whole different game. But I just don't know. I can't. I can't bring myself to do it just because I feel like it's a waste of time, honestly, for me, and what I do. You know, it'd be a, it'd be a good. It's always a good, uh, good thing to get your skills higher in any, any way, anyhow. Yeah, like to embellish. I, I just like to design. I like to get in there. You know. Oh, excuse me. Goodness sakes. I forget my microphone sitting right here. Hey, what's up, Pedro? I believe when people say that it, it's not easier but less technical because realistic can be more technical. Oh, yeah, it's absolutely more technical. That's, that's a given. So I would say realism is more on the design side and, and technical side. Or, sorry, realism is more on the tech side of things. Like you have to know a lot more to pull it off as far as like how to technically pull it off like substance and marvelous and all of those all of those things right that's that's more technically difficult to pull off whereas stylized stuff is more designy like you you have to have more of a design eye than a technical eye does that make sense it's talking out my butt here <laughs> making stuff up those molars need to be bigger <laughs> gosh <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> goodness sakes I want my studio back <laughs> mute myself soon yeah that's, that's also very true Fran and there's also the the uh, what do they call it the oh what is it called where it's it's so close to real is the uncanny valley I was thinking valley of the suck the uncanny valley where it's so close, but it's not perfect. So there's something off about it. Something that you can't put your finger on and it just looks weird. And sometimes, like doing a caricature of some people, sometimes the caricature of that person looks more like that person than that person does. That's the weirdest thing that I've experienced with, you know, because you're just pulling out the things that you see in that person to make them look the way they do you know as an artist and sometimes exaggerating those things makes you think about that person even more than anyway yeah it's it's crazy so i i prefer stylized stuff in like animated films and um than i than i do to realism just for that simple fact that it doesn't it doesn't give me the weird uncanny valley vibes you know like like that uh, Final Fantasy movie, whatever. It was just, or some of those, uh, like the what's the what's the train one, with Tom Hanks. Like those are just creepy. To me, I w I wish they would have pushed the character design more. For a first time entry level character job, how much should I tell a recruiter I would like to earn? I have no idea, Brock. It 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 completely ma It depends on 
where you're at in the world. Um, like if you're in even in, and even where what city you're in and what they're working on and how successful the business is. And it, there's so many factors that the range is gigantic. It's it's huge. Like, yeah, I don't I, I don't even know where to even start. You know, I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 because I, I don't want anybody to quote me on it either. I don't want to, you know, somebody to say, well, Shane said I, sh I should ask for this. And I don't want to be that guy either. Sorry. <laughs> so it, it's all I can say is it completely, completely depends on even the industry at the time. And yeah, it's, it's difficult. Sorry. I wish I just said, you should ask for this. <laughs> oh uncanny valley a lot of the time comes from the eyes especially the shaders yes skin shader could be perfect but the eyes are just slightly wrong with lid thickness and roughness maps all that stuff yep yeah i don't want game companies calling me up going what what are you telling these kids All right, what are we looking at? I'm liking how the skull's coming along. But honestly, guys, I might need to end this early. My back is killing me. Pedro. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thanks so much. I struggle on closed polygons, for instance. Eyelids. Close polygons? Uh, I usually don't... I usually try not to make them get too close. Is that what you're talking about? Like, I don't usually close my eyelids really close, but it's just, uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. It's, that's kind of a hard question. Okay, I'm going to split these off to spin them around, I think. Let's see. All right, you know what? Before we go, Let's do some re really quick coloring. And I want to go to this, see what this looks like. Yeah, that's pretty cool. There you go, Ashley will tell you. Mask areas and polygroup them to use them as selection sets. There's your answer, thanks. <laughs> I didn't quite get, understand or get what you were, you were after there. Yes, I'm using Sculptress. <laughs> oh man okay yeah sonic that's that's its own thing all right um i wanted to kind of color this up a little bit give him some orange Yeah, I'll, just, I'll start with everything the same color and get our airbrush out. All right, turn Sculptress Pro off. Let's get some of this. See what that, what that looks like. <laughs> yeah, MJ, it's, this guy is pretty metal. Metal. Okay, there you go. I'm just gonna fake some uh, amy occlusion here for starters. Just give them some more depth. What kind of character? A skull. That's it. Just a skull. Halloween spooky scary skull. I don't know how scary, but just fun. Oh yeah, well, I like that AO plugin, but I like to 
I like to paint it by hand because then I can get in here and really tell it where I want it to be. Because, you know, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of painting minis, you know, like for D&D &D and stuff. And it feels like that, so I like, I like doing that stuff. Yeah, plus it takes a lot of CPUs. It's a little too brown. MG, awesome. Yeah, I love it. Okay, let's go darker. I don't know how much I'm liking this material. I like it. It looks like bone, but it's also giving me this sheen in the dark places. I think I might have seen some of your stuff, MJ. Are you in that Facebook group with Patrick? I'm trying to remember what it's called. I'm sure we've talked before. How do you approach painting Minnie's eyes? Um, I usually just find the smallest brush possible and um, I just, yeah, I just kind of build it up from the inside. So just the, the whites first, and sometimes I'll even mask it off. It depends on how big they are, how small they are. And I'll just get my, I have one of those, uh, those, those nerd glasses that, that do like 20 times zoom lens with a LED light. You can get them on Amazon for like 25, 30 bucks, something like that. And they come with all these different depths of magnification. So I'll, uh, oh, happy Thanksgiving. Ash, thanks for stopping by. Um, and, and I will just zoom right in on them and just take either like a, a needle or a toothpick or something, just really, really small, fine brush. And just, just get in there and just build it up and just do the, the white first and the iris and then the, the pupils on there. And if, if they're big enough, I'll add a little teeny tiny little highlight. But usually they're not. Usually you're you're lucky enough to get a white in there. <laughs> hey, what's up, George? How you doing? too much yeah see how it just kind of kind of kicks it up a notch all right let's get a one-haired brush from a one tail one-haired tailed horse <laughs> no, I, I don't think I've gone down to a single haired brush, but usually I'll use I'll use like a needle or something. Yeah, it is the season for Halloweenin, right? Okay. Uh, kind of, Peter. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Uh, I, I actually wish I, I had some of those because those are really 
cool and steampunky, you know? Change this to be more like this. They're, they look like they're made of brass and glass, and that's very steampunk. No, mine are plastic and plastic. <laughs> Not as cool. Minor nerd glasses. I look like a huge nerd when I wear it. My, my family makes fun of me when I wear them. Oops, I'm going to do that. That's what he said he used for detail ball, Ross. That's funny. All right, cool. This guy's fun. I want to give him. All right, Tom, thanks, thanks for hanging out, man. What time we got? Oh, we only got 15 minutes left. Can he make it? All right, let's get, I just want to get some crazy eyes in there. Maybe some maroon. Because uh, Adam on his skulls, he likes to paint maroon on the inside of the eyes. That looks really cool and like bloodish. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> I forgot I grabbed a, a, an eye here. Do this first. Split it. Um, Pedro, no, I'm just, I'm not at my studio right now. I'm off site. I'm on my MacBook somewhere in the, I'm, I'm traveling, so. Yeah, get some color in there. A weird reflection right there I gotta fix yeah no mad stream in a desert lizards running by It's a good size screen, um, as big as you can get without damaging your eyes, I guess. I don't know. Um, I'm on a little MacBook Pro right now, so this is only like a 13, I think, 16 maybe. Yeah, anything, whatever you can get your hands on, that's what you use. <laughs> but the bigger the better, because then you can see what you're working on. Okay. There we go. Man. <clears throat> yeah, those will work. That's fun. Then do a black one. <laughs> I was from scary to funny. Hey, Harry. Yep, I did. 
Yep, yep. I'm about to wrap it up. Hello, you can see how you perspective. I don't know what that means. If you're wanting to see perspective, push the button P. P. Yeah. Now, let's do one more thing. Uh, jaw. Those are the top teeth. Jaw. Bottom teeth. Jaw. Okay. Merge. Okay. Why did this not merge down? Oh, I merged this into that. That's not what I wanted. I want to merge this down. Okay. There we go. Come back to you. There we go. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm going to wrap this up, but I wanted to make him laugh. Like this. <laughs> yep, so there you go. And I can make him. <laughs> How can I work on two tools at the same time? I'm trying, you, you have to merge them together if you want to work on them at the same time. Merge them into one subtool. That's what I just did to get the teeth working with the, the, the rest of it. So, anyway, guys, that is it for today. Um, thank you for thank you so much for hanging out with me, and I will probably be here one more week next Monday, uh, one more week, and then I go home the Thursday after that. So, um, yeah, super, super anxious to get back to my own studio, get back to my Cintiq, but but we we do with what we got, right? So anyway, uh, thanks, you guys. Um, and we'll see you on next Monday. And don't forget, if you want this user interface, my brushes, I give them away for free over on my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com, where I also have a course that teaches you how to make stylized characters just like this one. All right, guys, take care, and we'll see you next time. All right, cheers. <laughs>